Very few people who were alive in 1987 could forget the baby Jessica Saga. An 18-month-old girl in Midland, Texas had fallen down a 22-foot well while playing in her aunt's house. The girl was stuck in the dark subterranean crevice for nearly 59 hours, but the extensive media coverage made it seem as if the ordeal had dragged on for weeks. The drama had brought people together as the local oil diggers come rescue workers, reporters and neighbours to Daily Vigil in Midland, Texas, as did millions of television viewers all around the globe. There was a moment of anxiousness when the rescuers learned that baby Jessica's right foot was wedged between rocks. And there was universal delight when baby Jessica sang along to the, to the nursery rhyme Humpty Dumpty fell down a wall, which was played on a speaker and lowered down into the well. And finally, a tearful relief as baby Jessica was finally pulled out of the well unharmed. In the aftermath of the rescue, the McClure family received more than $700,000 in donations from the public for baby Jessica. Many, many newspapers wrote gripping articles about her, as did numerous magazines. There was even a film made about her. Of course, baby Jessica and her family suffered a great deal. But why? Why, at the end of the day, did baby Jessica garner more media coverage and attention than the 1993 genocide in Rwanda, in which 800,000 people many of which children same age as baby Jessica were brutally murdered in 100 days. And why? Why did our hearts go out to the girl in Texas much more readily than to the victims of mass killings and starvations in Darfur, Zimbabwe and the Congo? To broaden the question a bit, why do we jump out of our chairs and write checks to her one person, while we feel no great compulsion to act in the face of other tragedies that are in fact more atrocious and involve many more people? It's a complex topic, and one that has daunted philosophers, religious thinkers, social scientists, and writers since time. Joseph Stalin had once said, one man's death is a, is a tragedy, but a million people dying is a statistic. And Joseph Stalin's polar opposite, Mother Teresa, expressed the same sentiment when she said, if I look at the mass, I will never act. If I look at one, I will. To put this into perspective, imagine you're, that you're in London interviewing for your dream job, and you see that you have a few hours before your interview, so you decide to take a walk by the river in order to clear your head. As you're walking by the river, you hear a cry for help, and you see, if you feel up the river, a little girl who appears to be drowning. You're wearing a suit, a brand new designer suit, they had specifically picked out to impress the interviewers, and one that had set you back, let's say, a few thousands of pounds. You're a conference swimmer, but if you want to save the girl, you have no time to remove anything and must simply jump in. What do you do? Chances are that you wouldn't think much. You would simply jump into the river and save the goal, and by doing that, damage your thousands of pound suit and miss a job interview. The decision taken by you to jump into the river is clearly a reflection of the fact that you're a wonderful, kind, and amazing human being, but it's also due to three other psychological factors. The first of which, proximity. Proximity does not simply refer to the physical nearness between you and a victim of a tragedy, but also the emotional and psychological nearness. For example, you're close to your family, to your, to your friends, and to people with whom you share similarities too. Thankfully, and naturally, most of the tragedies in the world do not happen of a close proximity to us, neither physically nor psychologically. The second factor, vividness. If I tell you that I've cut myself, you don't feel much of my pain. But if I tell you that I've cut myself with tear, tears in my eyes and tell, me, and tell you how my skin is torn and how much blood I'm losing by the second, you're able to empathize with me much better and feel, and feel an immediate need to act. Likewise, when you see the little girl, four or five years old, drowning in the river, you feel a great compulsion to act immediately. The third factor is what psychologists like to call the drop in the bucket effect. It refers to a person's ability to single-handedly and completely solve the problem for a person. L like, in that scenario, you can single-handedly save that girl and save her from her fate. Now, to see how these factors would affect your actions, now imagine that same little girl was in a faraway land struck by a tsunami, and he could, at a very moderate expense, much less than the thousands of pounds your suit cost, you could save her from her fate. Do you, are you, do you still jump in with your pounds as you did into the river, or are you a bit more hesitant? And what about the millions of kids the same age as her that are at risk of developing diseases such as cholera every year? 
you could at very moderate expense save them as well. But are you more hesitant since you are you more hesitant since you're disca discouraged by inability to completely solve the problem, or or do you still jump in? And what would happen to motivation to help? Thank you.